Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for coming. Uh, today, we are going to be checking out a video by Beaver Geography called The Insane Rise of the Texas Triangle. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I did mention how I am definitely obsessed with um, maps. Um, I wanted to be a cartographer for the longest time when I was younger. And uh, analytics of cities and populations, I really can't get enough of. So uh, let's go ahead. We're going to hop into the video and uh, check it out. A megalopolis is a group of separate metropolitan areas, all connected to form one much larger populated area. I consider there to be seven major megalopolises in the United States. The Northeast Megalopolis, Southeast Megalopolis, SoCal, Texas Triangle, Florida Peninsula, Front Range, and Cascadia. The Northeast Megalopolis is the biggest out of all of these, holding some of the biggest and most important cities in all of the U.S. But that's not what we'll be talking about today. Because there's a different megalopolis. Isn't there like a massive one right in the middle of the city he's not mentioning, like around the Chicagoland area? Like Chicago to Milwaukee to Green Bay, through to Detroit, Indianapolis, what is it, Cleveland? Like that whole center makes up part of the Rust Belt and part of the Midwest. Like it's it's all essentially connected. I mean, I, the fact that he didn't mention that's kind of confusing me. But. With absolutely explosive growth which is becoming one of the most important regions in the entire country. This is the Texas Triangle. Yeah. Really quick before I get into that, sure. though, I wanted to I mean, to Houston is massive, but it's connecting and sprawling out to Dallas as well. I content like this every week, and seeing a lot of growth on the channel gives me so much motivation to continue doing this. So please just simply hit the subscribe button, because it helps me out more than you know. Thank you. So what is the Texas Triangle? Well, it's defined as a mega region located in the eastern part of Texas. It has a total population of 17.7 .7 million, spread through eight metropolitan areas, yeah. and is continuing to grow at a rate not seen anywhere else in the United States. It's completely insane. So now that you know the... Yeah, I do know it's growing at a crazy rate. Like, Houston is set to surpass here, uh, Chicago here in a little bit as the third largest city in the U.S., which hurts my heart a little bit, like the Pride area, being from the Chicagoland area, but... Getting away from those winters, man, I don't, I don't blame people. Like, I moved out of there. I, I can't handle the cold like that anymore. Basics, I wanted to go through the different metros that make up the megalopolis. But before I can do that, I wanted to state how recent the Texas Triangle became relevant. In 1950, not a single metro had a population over 1 million residents. Now there's over 11 million in just the two biggest cities. Over the rest of the yeah. video, you'll really start to realize how fast cities went from mid-size to one of the biggest in the country. So let's start with San Antonio. It has a metro population of just over 2.4 million, and it's grown by 1.9 million since 1950. San Antonio is San Antonio in that cities in triangle that he was talking about? The Alamo, as well as the iconic Riverwalk. It's the 24th largest metro in the United States, and the third largest in the Texas Triangle. Next up is Austin, Texas, a city iconic for its recent growth and sudden notability. Yeah. It has a population of 2.2 million and has even crazier growth than San Antonio, gaining 2 million in the last 70 years. It's recently gained a lot of celebrity notability, becoming a hot new spot to move to because of the lack of income tax. It's the 28th largest metro in the U.S. and just the 4th largest in the Texas Triangle alone. He was just talking about, he just mentioned about like the no uh, state income tax. I know there's five states in the U.S. that don't have that. I currently live in one. I previously lived in another in Florida. But um, like that's huge reasons. I mean, Texas is a place I would move to just from those aesthetics. Like the two main aesthetics being uh, no state income tax as well as the um, the weather. The weather in Texas is is better than than the north like i it's better to live in the south than in the north in my opinion i always hated winter and uh yeah i mean when you like i lived in florida for about five years and when your your cold days get down to a you know a, a chilly 55 at night you know you get used to uh nice weather you, you get used to not having to wear coats which shows just how large these cities really are next up we have the killeen temple metro an underappreciated area of Texas, which is a lot larger than people think. Yeah. It has a population of 480,000, making it bigger than such cities as Asheville, North Carolina, and Mobile, Alabama. Killeen is home to Fort Hood, an American Army post, as well as some of the most mind-numbing suburbs in the entire country. 
mean, tell me these aren't just that's pretty anyway, gritty. I mean, that's made by like a City Skylines player. Killing temple by a statistical standpoint, hovering at around 280,000. But unlike every other city I'll talk about, Wicca was actually well developed in 1950 and didn't completely explode in population. It actually had around the same population as Austin back then and didn't come anywhere near the same level of growth. Next up is none other than the Dallas Fort Worth Megaplex. At a population of 6.5 million, it clocked in as the fifth most populated metro in the entire U.S. And really? the biggest in the Texas Triangle. Dallas Fort Worth is one of the most sprawling cities in the I didn't know that the Dallas Fort Worth was the fifth largest. In fact, the drive from one corner of the metro in McKinney all the way to the other in Weatherford is 86.2 miles and would take one and a half hours. That shows incredibly simply how bad the sprawl is. That is a massive so sprawl. On all over. Look at that cookie really cutter. Talk about all of it in the short portion I'm giving them, but that's what happens when you're talking about the fifth largest city in the entire U.S. Now, after Dallas, it gets a little interesting because with the name of the megalopolis, it gives us something. It's the Texas Triangle. This means, by definition, the region encompasses the entire interior, and every city located in here is considered to be part of the Texas Triangle. So that leads us to our next city, College, College Station. Station. It's located more in the middle of all these cities, being a little closer to Houston. It has a population of 280,000, and an increase it's of still a massive population. Like, like that's a big city. Now, obviously, the city is built around Texas A&M University, okay. which results in some very interesting urban layouts. There's no real city center, with the central part of the city being the campus. There's lots of apartments all around the central area, which also makes for a very interesting view, with mid-rising complexes everywhere. College Station is also connected to the city of Bryan, with a population of 83,000 on its own, it's which is a very hollow. large city that a lot of people have never really heard of, that really deserves some attention. So now we come to the largest city in the metro, Houston. It's the fourth biggest metro in the entire country at a population of 5.9 million. The best way to describe this city for me is a more swampy so valley. big. The two cities have always been a lot alike in many ways, with only a few main differences. The biggest one is that Houston a swampy is Dallas. I don't actually have never been this to makes Houston. This the overall shape of the metro more circular, while Dallas Fort Worth feels like two small circles mixed together. Houston is home to the Katy Freeway, considered to be the widest freeway in not just the country. I mean, Houston is technically under sea level, isn't it? Country, but the whole world. Going all the way up. Look to at this. Look at this. How many lanes are we talking about here? Three. Is that like a seven lane highway? Six lanes in some areas. It also has some of the worst traffic of any highway in the U.S. Look at Maybe that. Maybe if they added one more lane, it wouldn't be so bad. Finally, <laughs> there's Beaumont, Port Arthur. This isn't Ugh. technically in the actual triangle, and some would argue it's not part of the megalopolis. Where but is I this now? The Beaumont area? Part of it, making it deserve a small portion of the video. At a population of 430,000, Beaumont is actually a very large city. That's massive. It always felt like a mini Houston with the main cities farther out from You know, I've never even heard of Beaumont, Texas before, That's and you're talking 430,000 people. That's a crazy. It's home to the largest oil refinery in the country. So the Texas Triangle is one of the core of American megalopolises, boasting a total population of over 17 million. This is notably 8 million more than the Southeast Megalopolis, which has 11.8 million. But the population gains are on par, showing just how crazy the triangle really is. I feel like the one thing about this state and this megalopolis that really baffles me is the sheer number of population in small towns you would never really consider. Take Corsicana, for example, a small town you've probably never heard of south of Dallas. It has a population of 23,000. Or Waxahachie, 30K. Claiborne, 30K. I mean, New Braunfels, Texas, has a population of 85,000. That is a city that everyday Americans have never heard of, with a population yeah. over 80k. That's, I mean, that's a lot of people. While talking about the Texas Triangle, one thing you can't avoid is the political shift over the past couple decades. Most people think of Texas as a conservative stronghold, never to be flipped. But every election, the Triangle shifts more and more to the left. Austin, Texas led this charge, actually becoming a center for Democrats, something you wouldn't usually expect. The other three major metros in San Antonio... Well, isn't there a massive, like, I mean, I'm just thinking of, like, Joe Rogan and his posse, but there has been a push for a lot of, like, entertainers, uh, 
to move from Cali. Like, there's in there hasn't there been a big push from California to the Austin area lately? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dallas and Houston are all rapidly shifting left, especially in their suburbs, because this is the main thing driving the shift: the suburbs. See, these areas have been rapidly moving left for a while now. Republicans have fought back by controlling rural areas to an even larger extent, something also happening in the Triangle, but there's no denying the obvious switch from dark red to light red, and light red to blue. The Texas Triangle is growing at an explosive rate, and the future could be very bright for the economy there. Maybe one day it'll become the center of America, being where all of the most prestigious jobs and people are located. I mean, it already has got a massive tech Thanks for watching. presence, doesn't Wait, it? Before we end this video, I wanted to shout out my members, Bryson, Aaron Washington, Rosebud4, Van Anonymous, Dom. Okay. Yeah, thanks to, um, thanks to the, uh, creator of this, uh, the Beaver Geography. It was an interesting video. Um. I am always curious about population growth. Like, I wish there had been some sort of um, uh, projection for for population growth that he might have done maybe like 20, 30 years down the road. I mean, when you look at that Texas Triangle and you see the sprawl that's already happened, like, imagine another 30 years. Uh, especially, like, I mean, not to get too into the weeds here, but when you're talking about, like, extended lifespans and more people, less people dying essentially off, I mean, where are you going to put these people? And, uh, I mean, you got to put them somewhere, right? Um, hmm. I don't know. I find it very interesting, though. Um, I'm still curious why he didn't mention the Chicagoland area uh, with a massive population up and down the uh, um, Lake Michigan. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you.